are listening to an Atomic Broadcasting production. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the feature presentation. And remember, do your part, such as like, comment, rate, and don't forget to tell a friend to tune in for an Atomic Time. Now, where did we leave off? Ah, yes. After stopping at a village for a rest, the party continued toward the Troll Forge in the Summermelt Valley. As they approached the oversized front gates of the forge, however, they saw a large troll between them and the entrance. Baldur's Gate 3. Yeah, it's been great. I want to <laughs> buy it. Do. Um, actually, don't. Well, maybe. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what games you like. I hear so much about I want to. I've been getting games to play with people. Like, I mm-hmm. just bought uh, Age of Empires 2 Deluxe Edition. Mm-hmm. And I haven't played that game in a solid it's decade good. or yeah. more. And um, I forgot how much I loved it. Baldur's <laughs> Gate Run. Like, if you ever played Divinity Original Sin 2. Its mechanics are almost identical. This would um, be like a uh, a break breaking into a genre game for me. I haven't played anything like Baldur's Gate. What so no rule CRPGs. set is Baldur's Gate three? Because I I think Five the original one e? was two e. Mm-hmm. It's yeah. Dungeons and Dragons fifth edition with a lot of okay. changes yeah. to make everything better. It's what Dungeons <laughs> and Dragons fifth editions wishes it was. So D and D one no <laughs> when they release that maybe. Maybe know. actually, because like a lot of stuff, there's like a lot of quality of life improvements that you can't do in D and D, like uh, pushing, shoving, and a bunch of that stuff. I think is a free action instead of an action. Uh, it's been so long since I played D and D five E, so I could get a lot of these rules <laughs> wrong. Uh, but also like jumping, you can jump uh, without much movement left, and like a bunch of other, and like get farther than you would normally. I'm just um, trying to imagine a game that runs off of 5e, because I'm actually in a 5e yeah. campaign. Drawing weapons is a free action. You can swap between your ranged and not ranged weapons. I can't imagine that in a game, like in a, in a video it's, game. It's good. It's really good. I've heard. I've, I've heard really good things about it, but I ugh. I can't remember who it was. I feel like it was either Steam or, or Epic or good old games i don't remember what website but they were giving away <laughs> no that's really what the place is called they were giving away the first and second Baldur's gate uh, like, i think uh, it was right um, after humble so, humble yeah oh yeah humble, humble. humble uh they were yeah it was like shortly humble after bundle. the third one came out and i was yeah. like i'll give it a try but then i just could not get I, the first i couldn't get into the first i one. beat Baldur's gate through two uh forever ago on it was such a scratched up i did so much put so much love and care into that disc just to get it to work <laughs> <laughs> you do the, 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 the <sighs> no i uh so my mom at the time was dating a car mechanic so he brought home um the like the buff stuff for car scratches and i put that on the disc you put that on the disc it worked beautifully i, I mean yeah, that <laughs> actually makes sense that it would because yeah. you're just buffing the scratches out of the plastic. It, it worked so well. Oh my new. goodness, I never thought of that. Yeah. Shoot. If, if there is not a product out there for cleaning discs or cars called The Buff Stuff, I'm going to be really upset. I feel like there is. <laughs> I'm going to look But you're up. right. If there isn't, there should be. Uh, the Buff Stuff. The Buff <laughs> Stuff. I want to see that commercial. It's now. specifically for muscle cars. I say I should say that. Surpri- just just like have it has to have like a strong man in in the commercial. It's just like Brian Shaw. He only uses the buff stuff on his truck. Uh, just slathers <laughs> it on his muscles. Okay, so the buff stuff is a store, but they don't sell buffing stuff. They sell buffalo meat. <laughs> Specifically of the water variety. (laughs) Get buff and buff. (laughs) I don't even know where to go from that. Well, I was going to (laughs) say, I love tabletop games. I'm a big fan of all these things. I can never get into CRPGs. They never stick with me. Games like Baldur's. What does C stand for? Computer. Oh, okay. (laughs) Games like Baldur's Gate 3, Pathfinder... 
Kingmaker, Wrath of the Righteous, those Shadow Run games. I can never get into them. I can never stick with them, even though they are just mm-hmm. tabletop role playing games put in a video game, and they should be fun to me. But I don't like them. To, I'd rather play the tabletop role playing game yeah, and to, just enjoy it. To bounce off what Sam said, I fully agree with that. Like whenever I'm playing Baldur's Gate, I have to play it for like three, like however long I play it, and then I don't touch it for another like five days, and then <laughs> <laughs> eight. Uh, we have uh, foam stuff hanging on the wall, and one of them we just had fell. Foam yeah, stuff had. Hanging they're on slowly the wall. falling down, and one of them just fell down and hit Abby. They're right within head hitting range. Uh, Assault. There have been more that have fallen off than remain on. Sven. And I placed them up next. this morning. <laughs> <laughs> They're all over you now. I'm in danger. <laughs> so I think with the CRPGs, there is that aspect of um, definitely home rules and also community base. Because mm-hmm. like when you're playing online, I mean, or when you're playing on the computer, I don't know how the multiplayer works, but Wonderful. you could be playing with other people, but you're not like sitting in the room with them, staring into their eyes, loving. I mean, you can if you do a <laughs> LAN connection. Just <laughs> well, I mean, you're looking at a screen, but, but the with weir- the, the, weir- the home rules as well, like you can't just say, "Oh yeah, I want to do this." Well, go right. for it. But the weird <laughs> thing is, like, I love turn-based strategy games. I'm generally not all. Of, there's a lot of those that I don't like, but I like a lot of turn-based strategy stuff. And I also like a lot of role-playing games where you, like, make a decision. You pick a thing, like, from MMOs that have, like, story-based decisions and stuff like that. But I don't like... I just haven't enjoyed when it seems like they're put together very strongly because then I just don't feel invested. And I don't know why. But Mm. it just is the way it is. Speaking of being put together very strongly... (laughs) (laughs) There's a troll. Yes, and this There's troll does troll. seem to be put together very strongly. So just to kind of like set the scene back up again, you've just come up over cresting this hill following this trail up to this location you've been told is Troll Forge. As you've approached, you see a doorway into the side of the cliff, but these large iron doors seem to have been ripped off their hinges and are laying on the ground outside of the doorway. And just a few paces away from those doors is a troll sitting with its back to you. It does not appear to have noticed you yet. This brings me to an important question. From what we know of Trollforge, are those doors normally ripped like that? Or is that a new occurrence? Uh, From the society checks you were making before, you know they've been like that for a while. Okay. That's okay. That that, that that changes the tone of looking at these doors. Really does. (laughs) And And the troll, I mean. Has the troll noticed us? It doesn't appear to have noticed you yet. I will mention that the mountain range that you are on right now is running north to south, and you are on the east side of that mountain range. So while the sun hasn't set yet, it's already starting to get dark around you. Mm. Mm. So in in the realm of uh, positioning, are we still climbing up the hill, or are we in like a parallel position to them? If you want to, you could say that somebody had noticed the troll and was like, hey, hey, hold off or something. Or you could be all, we're on top of the ridge standing on level ground. It's up to you which of those situations you want to pick up. The but if we transition. stood there, would we be in line of sight with the troll? Yes, but it has its back to you. What's it doing? It appears to be messing with something in its hands. It's like sitting on the ground. Solving a Rubik's Cube. That's exactly <laughs> what I was thinking. The troll Rubik's Cube. I think we should all be up. Mm-hmm. Yeah, agreed. It's only got one color on each side. Like, it's a single square. <laughs> <laughs> you can't figure it out. <clears throat> so who's leading this caravan? Uh, I think that's Uver because he's the one that rolled high on that nature check. Mm-hmm. <laughs> or survival. Oh, yeah, we, we were True. following Uver. Yeah, you were following me. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Unfortunately. I remember that. <laughs> I'm upset that I had to stare at that while climbing this whole time. Because <laughs> I'm looking up. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> wow. Val is like, Dog, uh, should we sp- try and speak to this thing? Does anyone, sp- what, what languages do trolls often speak? Uh, they, would I know that? Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. They, Anybody who's trained or better yeah. in society would know what language oh. trolls speak. They often speak I know. Jotun in common. They, oh. they do speak Jotun, yes. I speak Jotun. I thought they spoke troll. Does anyone else speak Jotun here? No, that's Jotun. Uh, I, I know how to speak Jotun too, but long story, but I know how to speak Jotun. I'm currently learning Jotun. Oh, currently. So you're still learning it? Yeah. You had your book out on the okay. wall. Okay. 
Should we try talking to it? It... Uh, I'd rather not attack it. Just... But the, the... Remember that this place is a, a rite of passage and it, they are used to being chased off. Before we get moving towards this creature, are we able to roll, like, recall knowledge about this thing so we can learn maybe if talking to it would be a good idea? Or if we should just try to avoid it, stuff like that? Sure, yeah. Let's see. <coughs> that would be... I'm going to go ahead and say society or irrelevant lore. I was about to say, I thought trolls were all society. Val has never seen one before in her life. <laughs> <laughs> Did you roll a natural one? I mean, she, he made us roll a secret check. <laughs> so I rolled yeah. a natural one. <laughs> they are mindless creatures. <laughs> <laughs> I think Uver's seen one or two. He rolled a 25. Oh, okay. same. Nice. So that's two successes. So... I will tell you that trolls are generally level five creatures. Oh. They have the giant type and the troll type. And you each may ask a question. I guess in the in the context of what we were asking, what is their general temperament? Generally, brutal and vicious. They are the sorts of creatures generally who would just see something living and rip it to shreds and then decide if they're hungry enough to eat it. Uh... I don't know if this will count as one of my questions, but what type of troll is it? It appears to be a standard troll. Okay. Does that count as one of my questions? No. <laughs> okay. <laughs> that was your success. Um, should we do weaknesses to get that out of the way? Or uh, the special ability. Yeah, or special ability. What do you guys think? I think special ability. Special ability. Yeah. All right. We'll do that. So trolls are notorious for their regeneration abilities. They rapidly recover from wounds inflicted on them. And unless taking fire or acid damage within the last several seconds, they will be able to get up from even a fatal blow. Nice. So, in other words, more mechanically, they will regenerate a certain amount of HP per round, but if you hit them with fire or HP, they skip their next regeneration. Mm. It's really annoying. Sorry, if you hit them with fire or <laughs> acid, they skip their next regeneration. Yeah. Cool. I wasn't sure which one it was. It's both. So... I have a question for all of you, and I yeah. could be asking this in character, but I'm going to say it as, I have a spell called Phantom Prison. Neat. Um, I can completely surround a large or smaller creature in immobile, illusory walls, trapping it inside uh, that it can't escape. It's, it's a will save, but it lasts for a minute. They can't see out. Would that be... That sounds really useful. Yeah, yeah. It sounds extremely if, useful. If he fails the save, it's an, I. This I imagine trolls aren't good at will. How willful are yeah, trolls? Yeah, I <laughs> would imagine that too. But we don't know. <laughs> that is accurate. It does it. Does it? Um, if it gets attacked or anything, does it go away? The so it says that um, the target can't see anything outside of the walls. The target can attempt a will save. Yada yada yada. Sorry, I should read the whole thing to you guys, shouldn't I? <laughs> the target can attempt a will save when the spell is cast, each time it attempts to interact or escape the walls, and each time something from outside the walls affects the target. Okay, so yes, if we attack yes, it, it, if we it attack tries it. to break out. But if it just tries to break out, it can also attempt it again and we again. We could always try to sneak in, like bypass That's it, and then if that fails, is he it can... Is it facing the door? It, yeah, is it facing the door or is it facing the mountain? It's facing the door. Oh. So no. Oh. <laughs> However, if it sees us, then we cast it. It feels like it might be more aggressive to try and break out than yeah. if it's just suddenly in a box. Yeah, that's true. We could just cast it and then because it might just walk it might just kind of be still like uh, what's the word non aggressive enough, pacified enough with what it's doing that it might just accept the walls and not really bother with it. Um, well, it's naturally highly aggressive, right? Towards living things, not True, walls. but if it's trapped... It's yeah, I'm thinking it might not notice it being trapped for a bit. Like, it might take a minute before it, it realizes. It goes into darkness? Uh, real fast. Oh. It's not darkness. Real fast. Is it... Um, can we see in? It just can't see out? Correct. Okay. I w I'm curious as to what it's fiddling with. Yeah, so the phantom prison is actually an illusion. Mm -hmm. There is nothing going on. The creature thinks it's trapped, and it can't uh, leave until it realizes it's free. Nice. Yeah, let's just try that. Which I think sounds I'm like okay. a good idea. Yeah, it's a great idea. 
Ten okay. out of ten. Yeah. All right, so what is your DC? Twenty. A regular failure. Ooh. Very nice. Awesome. So that means... Well, it, that, that means it's trapped. <laughs> that means it worked. <laughs> so to your all perspective, Zephyr waves his hand, says a couple magic words, and nothing really seems to happen much. But the troll just kind of like starts up from what it's doing and just kind of starts like looking around and then like mime style puts its hands out like there's a box around it. <laughs> and I start just waving to everyone. Let's go. What they can't the, see us. What was the thing he was messing with? And as it's putting its hands up, it starts kind of like half turning around and you can see it's wearing around its neck like a woven like pouch with like tassels and beads hanging from it. And as Zephyr was saying, which to answer your question, Jenkins, that does seem to be what it was messing with. And as Zephyr was saying, let's go, it can't see us. The troll starts going, uh, is someone there? Hello? I knew we should try talking to it. Jordy, these things are vicious and savage, Jordy. He's the diplomatic sort. <laughs> that does seem odd. Yeah. You liar. Don't uh, make me get attached uh, to the troll. Uh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> Zephyr's are just going to start running. Uver is actually going to stop and just glance. Because that the, the beads and tassels, does that seem like normal troll wear? That's really weird for trolls. Gotcha. What did what did it speak in? Uh, common. Okay. Oh, uh, yeah. Skull? Uver sees that and just looks at the rest. Like, is that that's not normal. Did I just waste no. a third level spell slot? Probably. Probably, bud. <laughs> <laughs> it was a good idea, though. It's <laughs> nighttime. We're about to sleep. It's fine. Uh, I'm. I think it might be worth trying to talk with it a little bit. Uh. Well, you've got a minute, so make it fast. Um, and Uver is just going to kind of step away a little bit from the rest of the party. Not too much. Um, uh, so sorry. Uh, yes. Uh, can we help you? It's gotten all dark. What's happened? It doesn't make sense for it to get dark. He can't see out of it. It doesn't mean he can't see the box. He believes he can't see because there are four walls. Yeah. I can't see anything past about a few inches in front of me. It's like I'm trapped in a ten foot cube. See? Hello there. Um, are you uh, willing to, you seem um, more um, willing to speak than we thought you might be. Oh, yes. Um, I'm sure you've had trouble with other trolls before. It to not to generalize but i uh, i in my experience trolls are more of hit first ask questions later yeah it's most are that way i i don't want to be that way though well uh, oh, that's great we don't want to actually hurt you which is don't worry that's you will not be trapped forever oh that's reassuring um uh, and uh, you are more civilized than other trolls, I, I might say, at least uh, talking to you. Uh, yes, I try to be. Um, you uh, appear for something? Uh, yes, um, a minute ago, I don't know where I am now, but a minute ago I was sitting outside of Troll Forge, where my ancestors made, I think, wonderful works of art. And I want to see it. Oh, well, that sounds wonderful. Are you here to make art? Or are you just here to look at it? I would like to make art. I make art all the time. How long has it been? About half a minute. That's a really slow 30 seconds. Time dilation. <laughs> uh, did you make that thing that you're wearing around your neck? I, I did. I, I weaved it and it took some time, but I think it's nice. It, it is. It is what made me realize that something was different about you. Oh, that's very nice of you. Can I make a... Uh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> Insight yeah. Insight check? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, go ahead and roll perception. Because uh, Howard's read a lot about trolls, and I don't know about I, Actually, this. you know, Uber is going to do the same, because that's, that's, yeah. that's a good point. Val will not. Val will step closer. <laughs> Val, Val. Val will put herself in the troll's hands. 
I'm just going to get attached to this troll. Uh, 20, not nat. Uh, okay. I forget what insight is for me. Perception. Thank you. I have a history of befriending monsters, apparently. As you or as uh, Neros? <laughs> as characters that I play. <laughs> you should see her house. What'd you get? 20. <laughs> hey! Hmm. As long as we don't both roll bad. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so both of you get the sense that, you know, he seems to be telling the truth. He seems to... M- Mostly just be kind of confused about what's going on. Uh, Zafia, maybe cancel your spell. So it doesn't say that I can actually cancel it, (laughs) but by this point I've already gone inside the, uh, like, not inside, but like right at the door. Um, Excuse me, do you, um, have you seen anyone else around here lately? Oh, yes. I wanted to go in, but there's some vicious people in there, and they pushed me back out. Ah, that's awfully rude of them. We're actually looking for some people. Um, Do you know much about them, or did they just uh, send you off? Oh, they they were just yelling and fighting and clawing. Clawing? Yeah. What kind of people are they? I don't know, skinny people. Skinny people? Ooh. That doesn't sound biting and clawing. Yeah. Did they were they kind of blue? Yeah, a little bit. Oh boy. Were they? Did they stink like rotting flesh? Uh, no, not really. Oh, okay. Uh, do you do you have a name there, uh, Mister Troll? I uh, I go by Pilgrim. Pilgrim. And as he says that, Zephyr, you kind of feel the magic just kind of dissipate, and the spell comes to an end. Oh. Hello. Uh, as we said, you would not be trapped forever. Our idea was to just kind of sneak on the bayou. Oh. Are you going into the Troll Forge too? Uh, yes, we are looking for someone. He's, he's not a very nice person. Oh. It, it, but uh, we saw you there, and I mean, uh, again, uh, trolls are normally, you are different, uh, Pilgrim, I think. Oh yes, I'm very different. I'm not. I'm not like other trolls. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Most of them want to just break things, but I want to make things. And uh, again, when I we saw your beautiful necklace, and it is very well done, I must say. For oh, thank you for a first try. Uh, is that your first try? Uh, I don't. First thing that you made. I've made not lots of other things. Oh, that one's very nice. Thank you. <laughs> I feel like that needs to <laughs> diplomacy. <laughs> For what? For what? For f- basically insulting him without meaning to. Don't actually make him roll. I, d- I don't it, think I insulted that's him. That's very good for your first try. I've made a lot of other things. Oh, never mind. That's very good. He's made not a lot of other things. Oh, I thought he said I've made a lot of other things. I have made a lot of other See? things. Oh. Well... Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but it's fine. I can see that you haven't made one, so I, I could show you how sometime. Actually, I would very much like to see how you made it. Well, first off, your Rivera, friend. Uh, we yes, don't have time. Your friend seems to be going in alone, and that's very dangerous. It. Uh, you're right. Uh, Pilgrim, was it? Yes. It was very nice meeting you. And I learned something new today. Not to read a book by its cover, so to speak. I can't read. It took you 200 years to learn that? (laughs) You're saying that you were different from what I was thinking? No, I'm not saying that, but (laughs) trolls normally do attack everything. Um, Not everything as uh, as it seems. Pardon my young friend over there. Today we learned (laughs) not to stereotype. (laughs) This is only the beginning of the episode. We're not trying to learn a lesson right now. (laughs) (laughs) Let's go in. It's the beginning of the episode, the end of the day. When else are we going to learn this lesson? Um, (laughs) Pilgrim. Yes. Uh, You want to go inside, yeah? I do. And you said there are people that are... Uh, kicking you out. Yes. Would you help me go in? I would like that, Pilgrim. Right. Do you want to go in first, or should I come in with you? Uh, well, since that... Well, we might have to hurt people inside. Would you... Oh, I don't hurt people. Then yeah, perhaps... I typically should... don't either. You should perhaps wait outside, and we will clear up the place. Okay. You can okay. come in. Afterwards, right. we'll get you. All right, I'll wait here. And he starts plucking some like long dried grass 
and like lining them up on the ground in front of him. We must protect this troll at all costs. He is too pure for this world. I must say, uh, in case that man uh, that comes up that we're looking for, I don't know if he's inside or not. It Ooh. might be best if you hide. He is not a nice man. What does he look like? We don't know. Do we not know? <laughs> yeah, no, we, we do not know. know. Oh. Well, if I see somebody, I'll hide, unless it's one of you. That would be best. One of you five, or that little guy, or one of your birds. The, and also, don't, <laughs> and I'm sure you also know, on occasion, other adventurers, not just this person, come up and chase off uh, trolls from this place. Oh, so if anybody else, if anybody comes out, or anybody comes up, I'll hide. Yeah, unless it's us. It would probably okay. be best for you. Okay. Aye. Before we go in, do you know of Sh- Shellen? Are you trying to convert a troll? I'm just asking. He likes art and beauty and stuff. I'm just asking before we go inside. No. Is Shellen, is that like a, a material? She is a, a god of art and beauty. Where is he going to worship? He doesn't have, he's not allowed in town. Well, you worship by making and by finding beauty. You don't worship in a place. You just worship. But they have temples of shape. What you else can go to a temple, that? but worship happens generally all the time. Not just in a temple. It's not just a place. You don't think Sharon would like my little grass patches? I think she would love it. Oh. She would love it. Well, I'll make one for her then. Is she coming too? She's probably watching us right now. Right. And he looks up the hill. <laughs> I'll, I'll try to make sure it's ready in time. Does he need to hide from her? <laughs> no. You don't need to hide from Shailen. <laughs> but uh, you probably won't see her. Oh. Oh. We're going to do that thing where I'm in a box again? No. Uh, that, that <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to... We need to get going. Yes. I'm going go in first, I believe. Does everyone want me to go in first since I've got the armor and such? Well, As you approach the door, you've seen that Zephyr is laying on one of the doors like a bed, just <laughs> waiting on you all. <laughs> I'll thank you for waiting, Zephyr. Uh, uh, I, yeah. How? Well, uh, <laughs> d- we will go inside and clear out those nasty people, uh, Pilgrim. Thank uh, you, thank you. I'll start making this pouch, and then as Pilgrim continues working on that, uh, Cornelius just kind of clears his throat. Do you want me to come in with you or wait with him? That is up to you, Cornelius. Uh, uh, Co- Cornelius, you don't usually come into these places. Sometimes, though, like when we went to the Barrows, you came in, but you stayed in the back. Right, right. I'll, I'll wait out here, and I- I'll just have a chat with this guy. He seems nice. And Ufer leans or kind of looks at Cornelius. Would you watch out for anybody? For <laughs> I'll keep my eye peeled. <laughs> uh, thank you. Then I think we should go in. Yes. And uh, be prepared. Yes. Is it dark in there? It is dark in there. But I am led to believe that the entire party has dark vision. Yes. yes. Him yeah. and his fancy eyes. My yes. eyes are closed, so I can't... Um, so oh, wait, when you have dark vision, eyes. can you see the backs of your eyelids? I don't like that thought. Let's go in. <laughs> 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 so as Val steps right into the darkness... These little floaty bubbles. I describe them as Kirby crackles. What is a Kirby? What? What? <laughs> a Kirby the pink puff? You can look them up if you want pictures of Kirby crackles, but they're like little like bubbles, like pitch like colored bubbles Do you that are used in like comic effects a lot. Oh, I know what you're meaning. And they're kind of forming around her eyes to like a faint glow as she like walks into the darkness. And then she sets on her helmet, which her eyes are kind of glowing through. I thought you were talking about Kirby, the pink round thing that goes, boy, oh, No, yeah. the artist. The artist. <laughs> yeah, not Kirby the artist. Crackle. After looking it up, it makes a lot more sense. Kirby Crackle is also a band. Yes, it, it, which is a pretty good band. <laughs> <laughs> Have you listened to them? All the time. It's comic book music. Oh, okay. Now she's got her helmet on, and they're glowing like through the helmet, through the slits, mm-hmm. and then she kind of steps forward with her glaive. And as the five of you step in through the doorway, past the ruined doors, into this open space, the room is troll-sized. Ah, <laughs> whoa. Oh, wow. my gosh. So it's like 20 feet high? This isn't the yeah. first big, okay. big room they've been in before. So, the, yeah, the ceilings are like 20 feet tall. 
the doors are built like they're double doors and each door is like five foot wide and it they appear to have been built for you know a creature of pilgrim size was the bean room about the same size was the bean pretty room? much the exact same scale oh my oh. goodness oh. that makes sense okay i didn't know this was a troll game it's a, it's a troll game it's a troll game it's somehow colder inside than it is outside that makes sense like a cave there feels to be like a chill breeze coming from your left where there's like an opening into a raw stone room the room that you've stepped into on the contrary seems to have tiled stone flooring and the walls appear to have been chiseled out of the raw stone but in sort of like moria dwarf style it's like treated stonework that's just cut out of the living stone of the mountain. Mm-hmm. What's that red stuff? You s- you said it was carved out of living stone, so it's living stone, I presume. Uh, the red stuff is things that I've drawn on the map because I forgot to put it on the map when I made the map. I was going to actually use a map and miniatures for this one, so and then it was just too big. Jordy, let me rephrase my question. I knew there were things you drew on there to <laughs> alert us that there are things there. Uh-huh, uh-huh. What, what are, are the things? <laughs> oh, you want to know what these red squiggles are supposed yes, to be? Yes, what they represent, if you will. Uh, so that stuff on the other side of the room, just like across from the entryway, there seems to be shreds of completely decayed, destroyed, like, fabric. But then there's also two oiled leather pouch- pouches that appear to be in pristine condition. And then one, like, moleskine journal. Can I get the journal? You can indeed. <gasps> oh, oh, he's got a handout. Oh, I gotta read. Good thing I can definitely read. And this journal is written in Scald, the common tongue of the area. Jenkins, do you speak Scald? Sadly, I do not, but <laughs> Alward does. <laughs> Read faster, Jenkins. I really enjoy Jenkins reading to himself, and I'm just filling this in in my brain in the world of Alward being like, oh, a journal, and he just sits down. Do you and not want to read this out loud to us? <laughs> I want to read or the it audience, first <laughs> so I can just sum up what it's about. But I wrote it. You're oh supposed to read it word for word. Give me a second. You can separate it by section and we can pass it. It is so... Okay, Give it we'll to do Uber. that. Let He'll me read it. Reading. <laughs> Alward, you're going to have to read it out loud because Give Zephyr Uber is not going... Monologue. Oh, right. Zephyr can't read. Zephyr's not going to take the time to read it. Uh-huh. Oh, yeah. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> what year are we in again? Uh, it is 4,723. Oh, wow. This is old. Thank you. 2023. Uh, so it's 17 of Neth. 17 of Neth. 14, 4698. We've arrived outside the so-called Troll Forge. Captain Pelton ordered a camp. Sorry, my brain just actually read that name, and now I can't think of thinking the Pelton. Give me the like, of No. <laughs> uh, ordered camp to be set up here, on this plateau, a mile or so downhill of the doors. By Torag, those doors. Pa's love of smithing may not run as strong as in me, but even I appreciate the craftsmanship that went into those panels. But I'm getting sidetracked. In the morning, we'll charge the forge when the trolls open the doors to return from the mighty hunt. Jacobs is nervous, says we don't have enough men, but I believe in the captain. He's led us through worse and greater odds. Oh, oh, oh! We're actually. I'm not reading. It's it so long. That's true. That was like this much. There's still this much. I'll read the next part. There's enough for you too. <laughs> Eighteen of net, forty-six ninety-eight. It's well done. Torag, save us! The assault was a disaster. The trolls were expecting us and put up far more of a fight than we were expecting. Thistle went down outside the doors in his first task. Dash. <laughs> Thistle went down outside the doors in the first dash. I can't bear the thought of it, but she might have been the lucky one. The trolls outmaneuvered us, pushed us back into the forge, and shut the doors. We can't budge them. I suspect they've got it barricaded from the outside. By the forge, father, it's cold in here. Oh. Sorry. By the full fodger, it's cold in here. Full fodger. Full fodger. Fodger. Full By the forge, father, it's cold in here. Somehow, colder than outside. There's a constant cold wind blowing from the south chamber. Langley has a fire going, but we don't have much to burn in this cave. This is taking me back to 
elementary school. <laughs> Why did, I didn't get to read. Oh, well, Zafir then. can't read. Here, <laughs> only you one really want to read. You can read it. I didn't it. want to read what's, it. What's last? Well, last, 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 last bit. 20th of Neth, 4698. We're out of fuel. We're out of food. Captain and Langley, Langlin are gone. Deep into the forge. They've gone for. They've been gone for too long. I've told them they would die. I told them that beast in the next chamber is too much even for the captain. I don't know how much longer Langlin and I can hold out. I'm so hungry. I'm so cold. Will everybody make a perception check? Oh. Did anybody check the perfectly <gasps> encompassed bags that were there? I just wasted this roll. <sighs> Stop getting What did you 20s. say? Perception? Mm-hmm. You literally are so hogging all of them. As she doing this, uh, Val's glaive had a little s- soft blue glow to it, and it now goes away. Ooh. Interesting. Huh. This cemented Val that she's feeling like there's ghouls in here. Um, That's for sure. If you turn Pilgrim on us, I we will kill you, Jordy. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we will. <laughs> Abby, what did Neros get? A natural 20. Ooh, what's the total? 28. Nice. And Val? 26. Zephyr? 24. Uver? 15. And Albert? 23. Dang. I forgot an ability that I had, and I am sad. Jordy, can we roll that back, or do I have to take the 20-something? <laughs> you want to roll it back? Yeah. If I can roll it back, because that would give me a 29. Yep, 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 yep. Yeah. All right, I'm going to do that. Oh, wow, gosh. That's what time magic works like. Remember, I get a weird sense about these things. You do. You have mm-hmm. a weird sense. Watch it be worse. So you say it's a 29? Uh, Yeah, because I would take 19 plus my mod. Okay. Ah. So everybody... <laughs> everybody but me. Everybody but Uber. <laughs> Again. <laughs> Just as Albert is getting to the end of like reading that, you hear like something like click. How do I describe this? Maybe like gravel against gravel on the ceiling over your head. I <laughs> swear, Jordy. Don't do How that. This is a children's show. What the absolute? Really? <laughs> it's not my fault Uver never looks up. <laughs> please, please tell me a monster's going to fall down on Uver again. <laughs> so because some members of the party have succeeded... You notice these creatures before they've gotten over your head and have dropped on the party. They are still on the ceiling, and we will enter initiative at that point. Whoa. Uh, are they ghouls? They appear to be, as you're looking up and you see them, oh, no. gaunt, bluish, just like emaciated humanoid forms Ew. that are like crawling along the ceiling, golem like being very careful to grab onto like icy patches in the ceiling. Icy patches? I don't like that. I would like to draw my bow before everything starts if I can. It's too late. <laughs> you were reading. We're trying to. I wasn't reading. <laughs> I was listening intently, maybe. I, I think, I think it makes sense for Zephyr to have drawn his bow while they're reading the spooky journal. I would expect most of us have our weapons. So we'll start with you, Alward, as these gaunt figures are crawling along the 10-foot high ceiling. Um, Alward's reading the book and then sort of before anything happens like snaps to attention and holds out his hand and uh, out of all of his fingers this like golden light seeps out connects to all of you and you're going to be hastened uh, for one round oh. only for a move action though. Awesome. Mm. Cool. That's cool Jenkins. Uh, and then I'm going to use that extra action to move down to the, towards the bottom right corner. You can get all the way into the corner if you want. Right there is perfect. And then I'm going to recall knowledge on the things. All right. For my last action. Let's see. It'll be society Ooh. or religion. Which would I you prefer? Am, I would prefer society. It's a plus 14. And that is a regular success. Woo. So you have heard about these. They're known as frost shamblers. They are undead that can result from people having frozen to death. They're like zombies, but they aren't exactly zombies. And they seem to be imbued with this permanent frost that they have some degree of control over. They are level six creatures. And then you get one question. I think I'm going to go with weaknesses. 
if any. I'm going to give you the interesting one. Okay. They are notorious for their terror of flames. If exposed to fire, they'll have to make a will save to not be frightened. If they're damaged by said fire, then they have a disadvantage to resist that fear. Pretty neat. Uh, and then Alward, at the end of his turn, is going to shout, um, Bring out the fire! Somebody light a torch! Essentially, kill it with fire. <laughs> <laughs> Alward's, kill it with fire! <laughs> All right, so Alward speeds the team up, gets a little information about the threat at hand, and next up is Neros. Oh, Lord. I did not take that spell. Dang it. I almost took Produce Flame, and then I didn't. Um, Alward, we basically had the same plan of move and recall knowledge. I mean, now you have a free move action. That is true. I'd like to back the heck up. Sure, leave the dwarf. <laughs> we so you want you to get dropped. <laughs> yeah, next to Alward is good. All right, so Neros books it across the room to the other side of the chamber from where it opened into that like natural cut stone room where the creatures are coming from. And you've got two. No, you have three actions left because you use your free action to move. I have so many spells that don't affect undead. I feel it. There's so many spells. It says a living creature. Basically anything with the mind trait. You got a bow, right? No. Telekinetic projectiles are good. I don't have a bow. I thought you did. No, that's No, that's Zephyr. Zephyr, the other fetchling. Gotcha. You racist. (laughs) (laughs) Hey, he learned today not to judge a book by its cover. Yeah, I may. (laughs) I may take your suggestion and save my level two spells for something else that we might need it for. So I want a telekinetic projectile, um, the one closest to me. All right, go ahead and make an attack roll. Why did you roll? That's why I... (laughs) No reason. Lies. 24. That's a hit. Roll for damage. I don't like how he rolled. I don't either. Five. Did you heighten it? No. What? For a telekinetic projectile? Yeah. It's three d six. Yep. Heightened three. Damage increased by one d six. Oh, I can't read. Fourteen. It's a lot better. Much better. better. (laughs) (laughs) All right. That's like five. (laughs) So as like your magic like slings up a rock or something from the rubble on the ground, it like clobbers onto the creature. And it scrabbles a little bit, but is able to maintain its hold on the ceiling. Oh, that's why. Mm, Yep. Oh. That makes sense. Okay. And you have one action left. Um. Remember, crying is only a free action. (laughs) There's no reason to cry yet. You can recall (laughs) knowledge. There's always a reason to cry. Should I recall knowledge again? Yeah, we can get more info. I'm going to recall knowledge. Don't hurt. All right. Religion or society? Society. And what's your bonus? Eleven. Abby, you also got a success on your check. What would you like to know? What do we want to know? <laughs> we already know a fun weakness. We can go saves. Best save or worst save? Uh, either have, would be helpful. Does it have more weaknesses? Uh, I'll go ahead since we've got two successes and just wrap in their boring save, boring boring weakness, their boring weakness for free. They have weakness to fire. I thought so. Oh, no way. Figure. Does it not just automatically wrap in when you ask weakness for all weaknesses? No, you don't get everything. Oh, okay. Worst save. Worst save is fortitude. Really? That's shocking. Or he could be lying he could be and lying. I failed. He could be lying. <laughs> I won't say one way or another as a GM who's run many undead. All right, Val. So Val grabs her glaive real close, tightened, and starts muttering a prayer to herself. Shayla, guide us and light us as we stand and destroy all that is bad. And for asthma, may your judgment against the undead be bright. And a bunch of really bright orange and glowing of uh, those little crackles start coming off the glaive as like sunlight begins to glow from it and shoot out. Nice. Mm. As she casts Sunblade. It's like a Roman candle. <laughs> <laughs> Except cooler. Oh, oh yeah, much cooler. <laughs> 27. Ooh, Ooh, kill him. That's a regular hit. Okay. Mm -hmm. So this spell does 1d4 fire damage. At heightened right now, it says 2d4 fire damage. 
If the target is evil, it deals an additional 2d4 good damage. If the target is undead, it deals an additional 2d4 positive damage. Kill. Which is all Jeez. of these things. If we were in an area of bright sunlight, no natural sunlight, it would be a six, not a four. But we were in the dark. Kill him. So it's going to be 6d4 damage. Uh, that's a lot of damage. Should I kept to my show other you D4s. the power of the I got a sparkly d4. That's good. I can just roll these twice. Okay, but I'll we take have, another one. Here, have this black one? one. Okay, yeah, one more. I'll have six. <laughs> Do you still need another one? Just one more. There you go. Thank you. We share our dice at this table. <laughs> it sounds not, like ice in a glass. We Ooh. may not always get it back, but we share them. Mine did bad. <laughs> Note to self, don't borrow dice from Jenkins. <laughs> okay, um, it is 14. Oh, no, it's 16. So that, that beam of light and flame shoots out, hits this creature. It loses its hold on the ceiling and drops to the floor, taking... Yeah, that's correct. Taking 10 damage from oh. dropping 20 feet. 20? I thought it was 10 feet. Nope, it's a 20 foot ceiling. 20 foot ceiling. It's oh. a troll room. So it Jeez. drops from the ceiling and takes 10 damage from landing. And there's like still like sparks and embers from the flame re- on it. And it just starts like howling and just like slapping at the flame and is now frightened too. Nice. Dang. Mm-hmm. Wow. Nice. I like it. Good. So move. it is afraid of fire. I'm glad I didn't fail. <laughs> I got one more action and a free move. I'm gonna move to the north, no, the south spot of the one in the front. I assume the one that just fell. And yeah, so she's just gonna swing with her glaive. What is what is it? It's a three right oh. now. Oh. Sam reads his cards. Which one are you giving up? I'm going to play Strike True. Ooh. I get to take the higher of the result and deal an extra damage die. Ooh. Ooh. Kill him. <laughs> Jenkins' favorite phrase of the day. 29. Well, he's, he's like one man arming this thing right now. So since it's frightened too and prone from falling <gasps> from the ceiling, oh, no, that's hit. a critical hit. Oh! oh! That means I would have... Kill him! I think him. I would have hit. <laughs> 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 All right, um... It's deadly D8, and it's a pull arm. So it also moves five feet of my choice. Uh, We'll worry about that in a second. (laughs) I believe that's 34 points of damage. Is it dead? Did he kill it? Kill it. With fire. So it just lapped right past bloodied and is now badly injured. Oh! Oh. not dead, though. Good first round. And then she'll move it to the right one step closer to... Or not to me. <laughs> I will move him down into the left one away from everyone. So I'm moving him around so that you're between him and the group now. Nice. Yeah. Nice. All right. Get it, Val. And that it's is her turn. Slaughter it. Now it's Zephyr's turn. So I, I am going to take advantage of um, Alward's movement thingy that he did. It's Case? called Loosened Times Arrow or Loose Times Arrow. Ooh, you loosened me. <laughs> I loosened um, you from time. So my plan is to go just like right next to Nero's above her on um, map directions. <laughs> so you run to the other side of the room and join the line of Albert Nero's <laughs> yeah. and now Zephyr. The caster yeah, exactly. line. <laughs> yeah. Come join <laughs> That's basically us. basically what it is. <laughs> Come join us. If, uh, and, move uh, I want to. <laughs> <laughs> I really do. <laughs> so that, that just takes one action of my movement, right? It's your free action yeah. from oh. Alward. So you, all have, you have three full actions left. Lovely. So my bow has been drawn, and uh, he, as if he raises it up, and you just see it uh, catch fire, and he aims it towards the one that's still on the ceiling. Kill him with fire. They're like cursed spiders. Agreed. That is a 24 to hit. Ooh. That's a hit. That's a hit. Roll for damage. So this is a spell strike. So, (laughs) well, I'll I'll add it all together at the end there. Yeah. Go ahead and give me the full damage, and I'll just know part of it's fire, so it'll proc his weakness. So that is 10 total. All right. And just because... I'm just going to recharge my spell strike with that single action I have left, and that's nice. what I'm going to do. All right. I will say, 
the creature on the ceiling as it's hit by that arrow just also similarly starts howling and is like alternating grabbing onto like ice bits on the ceiling and trying to like pat where the flames hit it and it is also frightened more where that came from which brings us to the frost shambler that (gasps) Val like got on the ground here I was thinking we were gonna have a full round without him it spends its first action standing up and its second action running back into the cave that it came from. <laughs> Fair. Honestly. Uver, your turn. Oh, thank goodness. Scoop me way back out there, buddy. <laughs> Join the line. <laughs> Welcome so to Uver, the caster line. Uver joins the line of casters on the far side of the room. <laughs> Except I'm pretty sure I can only move 20 feet back, so. Not 25. Yeah. Use another action to step into that space. No. <laughs> And I'm going to cast Produce Flame. Woohoo! Wow! What's the range Woo-hoo. on Produce Flame? Wow! 30 feet, so I'll cast Reach. I don't think you need to, does he? So right now, he would be 30, 30 feet away from, or yeah, 30 feet away from the creature if it were on the floor. Oh, but it But it's didn't 20 fall. feet up. Yeah, it oh. succeeded its check to stay oh, on the okay. ceiling. Yeah. Yeah. How dare he ruin this? Curse oh, no. you, Pathy. <laughs> Math. If you wanted to stop a little closer to the creature, you could hit it without reach. Mm, you know, I don't think I'm going to do that. <laughs> I think I'm just going to use reach. <laughs> Definitely not going like, to run away on its turn. It is a uh, 26. That's a regular hit. Ah, uh, shame. Regular success, so... Nine damage. Nice. Mm-hmm. All right. You're not bad for three fours. I rolled two ones, though. Ah, but he does have that weakness. Yeah. That and sweet, sweet weakness. It also maintains its hold on the ceiling, being hit by your bolt of flame from below, Aww. as it were. But it is it was affected by the flame damage. You get you definitely see that it's taking extra damage from that. And now it is its turn. And it will scrabble along the ceiling around the corner into the other room. Alward. We're round two. Does anybody else get the feeling that they're going for backup? Weren't there three people on the I mean, they, they're afraid of fire, so they're probably running away because of fire. There was a whole platoon on the journal. Would rather not let them heal. We have to kill them. I'm not in disagreement. That coming from you, Val, is... They're undead. Wow. So they shouldn't even exist. Chasing them? I am. I'm or going... they can lick their wounds. To, uh, I'm going to go ahead and cast Unseen Servant 30 feet out. What? Actually, I can do 60 feet out. Yeah, I'll do 60 feet out. But on the ceiling. <laughs> Does your Unseen Servant have a climb speed? No, he's flying. He can fly? Oh, okay. Yeah, that's that's the only way he moves. Oh, okay. Wonk. Yeah, just right up there. So you just summon your unseen servant right in the doorway into the natural cave room? Yeah, my friends can go past him. Yeah. They can't. It's fine. You know that scene from Star Wars where Han Solo runs into the room of stormtroopers? Mm-hmm. And then like he's away. chasing like the two. Yeah. Uh-huh. And then he opens the door and there's like probably yeah. dozens of them. I feel like... Just like that. I feel like Val is about to do that. <laughs> I'll kill them all. <laughs> all right, Neros. Uh-huh. Crying as a free action, I'm going to cry. <laughs> the and then, is complete. oh gosh, I'll move toward the door. Once being at the end of the turn, I will nice. note. I will note if you stay within 15 feet of me, I do have a reaction to protect you. Oh, because of the that's nice. That was one action. Can I move up into the corner? The, the north. West corner. So you run from the caster line into the opposite corner of the room. And as you get into that corner, you look around into that room of the natural cave. You can see the second of the two creatures still like clinging to the ceiling. And it's like grabbing off chunks of ice and like rubbing it on its body. It's healing. How high is that ceiling? Uh, Also 20 feet. Suspiciously smoothly. Like it doesn't jag up and down too much. Fire troll. Um, They're hot. It would melt the ice as they walk through. Stone, not ice. Do I, Lava troll. 
do I need to roll something to see make see if it is healing, or can I just assume that it's healing from the ice? Or just pretty on top. Uh, to be sure, would be a recall knowledge. I'm gonna recall knowledge. I want to see if it ha- it's regenerating or if it's actually just I, putting the that fire would out. Suck. I I think they have regenerative stuff, so I think it's a. Good That's idea. what I want to do. Yeah. Yes. It appears to be just consoling itself. It doesn't really seem to be healing at all. <laughs> okay, so okay. I failed. That's what I'm gonna get I'm from gonna that. Maybe. Okay. Or maybe you did. I think I failed. I don't think this creature is consoling itself. I I do like the idea. Instead of it rubbing the ice on its like wounds, it's like holding it like a stuffed animal and like <laughs> talking to itself. It's like a security blanket. Yeah. It's gonna be fine. I like how when we get the information that we don't think is the answer, <laughs> we automatically think we failed. I'm pretty sure I failed. I think I failed every time. I would never lie to you. Okay, he's <laughs> lying again. It's literally <laughs> your job. Val, it's your turn. Um, she will, how far is it to move in front of, in like the top left of the unseen servant? Uh, it would take your full, one, one full stride action. I will move there. Are they both on the ceiling? Uh, the closer one is on the ceiling. The further one is on the floor. It's also picking up ice crystals. And, and this one is almost on dead. Mm-hmm. But the one up there is hurt. Yeah, it's been hurt, but it's not bloody. Okay, I'm going to stab the one that's down there. Okay, so Val charges around the corner, Han Solo style with her glaive. <laughs> <laughs> but there don't appear to be any stormtroopers in here. Good. <laughs> that is a 25. That's a hit. We roll for damage. Nine points of damage. That one's still not frightened, is it? Uh, it is frightened one at this point. And it is not dead, but that was a significant blow. Can it be dead? (laughs) It's only mostly dead. Uh, Let me rephrase that. It's dead, but it hasn't been destroyed yet. (laughs) Ha 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 ha. That's a good point. Man's full of jokes. I just told you I I wasn't going to lie to you, so I had to make sure I was telling the truth. (laughs) Just let me know when it's my turn, because Sam's turns tend to take forever. (laughs) Because he has a lot of stuff to do. 24. That's also a hit. And because my glaive has forceful, it will deal an additional two points of damage. I miss 11 points of damage. And with that second blow, you cleave a big enough gash in the thing that it just kind of falls to the ground and shakes a little bit and then just, like, hardens. And the ice crystals that are, like, in various parts of the body seem to just, like, crystallize and just form it in one position and it stops moving. It was just cold. By the mother of graves and mysteries, by the gray lady, I will slay each and every one of you. Val has a dark side. <laughs> <laughs> and with that, it is Zephyr's turn. So since they all decided to be wimps and run away... Um, None of us did that. No, I meant the ice thingies. I don't know why I thought you were talking about <laughs> us. <laughs> <laughs> what is the distance between the caster line and the door? So from the caster line to cross the room into that opening into the natural cave would be like 50 feet. Okay. So take two stride actions to cross the room. Oh, crap. Does anybody know off the top of their head how many actions produce flame is? Two. 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 Oh, dang it. Okay, uh, I'm just going to take two stride actions to the door, and then I'm going to do a recall knowledge. All right. Society or religion? Society, which is a plus three. <laughs> so what would you like to know? Um, the truth. <laughs> <laughs> I, I cast stone <laughs> of truth on Jordy. <laughs> I'll make it well safe. Um, I'm not sure if it matters at this point. Uh, how about it's... It's a weakness. Yeah, give me a weakness. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> we already, we already have know it. You know its weaknesses. Uh, no, but that no, but that would tell me what the answer is. If it has if it has any regenerative special po- abilities. Abilities? Okay, let's let's do that. Does it have any regenerative abilities? If it consumes enough ice in one minute, then it will be restored like ten HP per minute. So okay. left alone, they can just regenerate. Is it consuming the ice, or is it just rubbing it on it? It's like rubbing it on itself, kind of like soap. <laughs> it's osmosis seeing it. Consuming. I don't we know. all know what consuming is, correct? If you're lying, or if you are telling the truth, 
It's it was a, a very well prepared lie. It's a it's half true. truth. Well, it might be a half truth. If it's a lie, it's building upon an earlier lie, which yeah. makes it easy. I do absolutely love the idea that these guys just came in to attack us. We hurt them. They ran away. It's like, nope, we, they're definitely not going to chase us. And that ends my turn. All right. The one on the ceiling finishes. No, I'm sorry. The one on the floor continues to be dead. Uber, <laughs> it's your turn. <laughs> uh, I don't know if there's much, a whole lot I can do. Uh, let's see here. Where, 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 where can I even go to possibly see? I'm not hastened anymore, am I? No, that was a one round thing. One time only. I mean, I could cast it again, but I'd prefer not to. Thanks for the memories. Just um, popped into my head. <laughs> Just for funsies, because I literally can't do anything else. Uber's going to cast Warp Step. Nice. Uh, it's a good spell. Fast as a running human. It's Uber. He is fa- he's slightly faster. Faster than a speeding beetle. He is five feet <laughs> faster right now than a running human. Is, is Warp Step plus ten? Oh, I might be thinking for only five psychics. Plus five. So that catches him up to normal humans. <laughs> and I get to... All of us in the door there. were like a freaking bottleneck. So runs up and clusters up with Neros and Zephyr kind of looking around the corner. Can and I see the it? unseen servant. Yeah. I can't see it, barely. It'll barely. have lesser cover, or greater cover, so a plus two AC bonus, but you'll be able to see it. It's also still frightened one. Yeah. And it's on the ceiling? Mm-hmm. Kill it. Cool. Cool. All cool, right. Cool. And at that point... I'll use recall knowledge. All right. Society or religion? Wow. Wow. Uh, What's my religion and what's my society? Society, please. And what's your bonus? 13. All right. You have dubious knowledge, yes? Mm -mm. No, you don't? Mm -mm. Okay. Ask two questions. Mm. I used to have it. Ah, That's what I was thinking of. Mm. Go one of two ways. (laughs) Either he will tell us the truth or he'll lie to us again. I mean, one of me always tells the truth, <laughs> and one of me always lies. Get out of here, you stupid door! That's one of the doors that's laying on the ground outside. <laughs> um, two questions. What's so. its name? <laughs> Iceman. <laughs> I'm going to ask if it has any AOE or any other special abilities like an AOE. Mm, good, good. It does. It has the ability to exhale like freezing cold air in a cone. And we're Don't all standing in the door. The truth. Um, we already know its weaknesses. Um, Resistances. That's always a good one. Yeah. It's a good or fallback. Or immunities. I say probably cold might be a resistance yeah, or it, immunity. That's probably. a reasonable So yeah, we'll assumption. do either uh, resistance or immunities, whichever one it has. All right. It is immune to all the normal things that an undead would be immune to, mm. and it is also immune to cold damage. Okay. Mm. Knowledge. Great. It's half the battle. Most the of other us half were using fire anyway, it. so. <laughs> Those of us who have fire. Speaking of fire. this little chap on the ceiling, it's his turn. Little, little, little Look at him up there. He's going to scrabble along the ceiling <laughs> to right here. And pulls out a board and some wooden see. letters. Plays <laughs> Scrabble. Ah, <laughs> uh, what a convenient place for everyone to be standing. It's a line. Gosh darn it. <laughs> now, are you taking into account that it's on the ceiling? I am. Oh, wait. I'm not even being in the doorway. Never mind. <laughs> it scrabbles to a position where it faces the door and drops from the ceiling onto the ground, takes a big breath in, and then and just... takes 10 damage. <laughs> 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 oh, because it... It, yeah. it dropped. <laughs> yeah. It, t- it takes 10 damage. It takes a breath in of like, <gasps> ooh, that hurt. <laughs> and then it goes... <laughs> <laughs> and it just starts exhaling like a wintry breeze that's going to hit Zephyr and Uver as they're standing in the doorway. Yeah. But Miss Val. And my unseen servant is safe. I don't have my character sheet up anymore, so it can't touch me. <laughs> that's how that works. <laughs> All Hold right. On. Hold on. When an enemy damages your ally, and both are within 15 <gasps> feet of you. So let me know if either of them take damage. We will find out. What's the save? That save is going to be a reflex save. Ah. (laughs) (laughs) 
I don't know what's going on over there. Not natural 20. Ooh. <laughs> oh, no, Sven. What'd you just do? He spent a hero point. Why, though? What did he roll? He's, he's heroic. Oh, he oh, rolled man. a one. <laughs> Actually, I would have... 21. I, I would have actually Ooh. recommended you didn't spend that and just took the one. That's a critical fail. Yeah. I can make you just take no damage. What? Yep. It's too late now. But won't you take the damage? No. Oh. All right. 21. As this blast of cold air comes at Zephyr and Uver, both of them rolled a regular failure. <laughs> what? What the heck? What are your hit points? Well, we don't. We know he's the tankiest wizard in existence. Uh, sixty. Why? Zafir, what is your total? Fifty-three. Zafir, this ghoul must decide either to not harm Zafir or give Zafir resistance seven and become enfeebled to resistance seven to just what? To the damage. Oh, the damage itself. It's amazing that this trait d- d- is still affects mindless creatures. It is a glimpse of redemption that she is given by Phrasma. You want to know what I, what's even Zephyr. more amazing? It can control its breath attack. <laughs> so <laughs> <gonna> it's, <laughs> it's exhaling, and then it's like, ooh, just kind of like moves its lips, <laughs> like channels the air, and allows Zephyr to have resistance seven. Ooh, and it becomes yeah. enfeebled too. I, because I'm because of a feat I took, I could also choose to make it stupefied too. But I decide to do enfeebled instead. Yeah, that, makes, that would help more. Yeah, that makes more sense. So. Uber will take 21 damage. Ow. And Zephyr will take 14 damage. Well. And that was his turn as he crawled across the ceiling, dropped down, and exhaled the cold air. Outward. Uh, I'm going to sustain my unseen servant and give it the m- command to block off uh, the thing's path. Thank you. Uh, and then how far away total is it from me? Uh, 55 feet. Okay, um, how far away is 30 feet from me? Just about halfway across the room, like in front of the doorways that you took to get into this room. Can I... S- oh, okay, I see what you're saying. Um, so if I were to cast a spell from there, it would be partial cover? Yes, he would have a plus one AC against okay. you. Okay. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and amp my telekinetic projectile with uh, warp space. Oh. That's... Yeah. Oh, I see what you're doing. You can actually cast it from one space further up and have no cover. Okay, yeah, let's do that because telekinetic projectile has 60 feet, so let's go pretty high up. Okay, to yeah. Get rid of the so cover. you can shoot it from like further out into the room around the corner with no problem. Yeah. Um, and let's see if I hit. Probably not. Ooh, 28. And that is a hit. Nice. I believe in you, Allard. I don't. Don't mess up. It's already rolled, so... (laughs) Don't mess up counting. So, just seemingly out of nowhere, a pebble's gonna fly towards it and deal... I just did the math and I forgot it. No. I just said don't mess up. (laughs) And I said don't mess up counting. 15. uh, That's wrong. Because it adds my mod. 19. My mod is higher than that. Your mod's higher than plus 4? Yes. What? No, it's not. Uh, <laughs> 19 damage. But you were surprised. Who are for you? <laughs> <laughs> what? I'm level 7. All right. And that brings him down to bloodied. Nice. Uh, and that is going to be my turn. All right. Neros. Ah! It's okay, lady. <laughs> no, it's not. Screaming may be a free action, but. <laughs> <laughs> um, can I see it? Around that corner, or do I have to take a step? No, where it's scuttled to, you can't see it. Dang it. Mm, you're right. I guess I'll move to where I can see it. Do a roll through Zephyr. <sighs> In range of a breath. It's fine. Uh. I'm going to cast Phase Bolt on it. Ooh. Phase Bolt. Phase Bolt. It's a good spell. It is. Especially when she ha- it has cover. I'm going to turn in a hero point cover. Ooh. Mm. And re-roll this. What'd you roll to turn yeah, that in? Yeah, yeah, I don't want to. Mm. <laughs> Below. I believe in you, Abby. Fail. Right, I have to stop saying I believe in Abby. Every time I say that, she rolls bad. You I really forgot. do. I forgot. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. You'll have to accept my I'm apology. I'm so sorry. 
I don't accept your apology. <laughs> Understand. What was it? A 15. Unfortunately, that is a regular fail. Yep, I wasted a turn. I'm sorry. Aw, sad day. So Nira steps down to where she can see the creature, lets loose a phase bolt that just kind of blips off into the cav- catacombs or caverns, excuse me, caverns behind it and just splatters onto the wall. I don't know what a phase bolt is made out of. Phase. Phase. <laughs> energy. It, it just Not a sponsor. Cracks the wall. <laughs> phase so a, energy. A can of phase energy drink just goes <laughs> flying across the it's, it's a ma- It's magical <sighs> energy, so whatever that if is. That's not phase is magical. Drink, <laughs> if that is not an energy drink already, can we, if we ever actually get can decently we start sized, our own make an energy, energy drink? drink and Starting call it with the buff stuff. Guys, <laughs> I would be so down for energy that. Energy and protein drinks. Yes. Let's do that. Let's do that. Yes. Let's do that. If you're interested in that, let us know. <laughs> the name is not yet taken. <gasps> Guys. Oh Nobody God. listening to this take our idea. We will sue Jacob, you. Jacob, cut this out. <laughs> 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 we are copywriting this name. Someone quick, say a bad word so he has to take it out. <laughs> Dookie. <laughs> <laughs> bum, bum. Val, it's your turn. Thank you. Val... Um, looks at this thing and says, In the wrath of the Lady of Crabes, this will be your end. And her um, feathers, tattoos, start like more of those little bubble crackles start coming off of it, like dripping out, just in like spheres. And they start going like into the glaive. And it begins, you know, glowing some more. And she swings, uh, she swings out. With Divine Retribution, which is a relic ability I have, which mm-hmm. allows me to deal an additional damage die on a hit and enfeeble them if they're evil. Noise. So she shall swing out. Uh, 24. And that's a hit. That'd be 20 points of damage. Jeez. It is on its last legs. There's like gashes in its body, and it's like somebody left the freezer open on a humid day, and there's just like water vapor crystallizing. And I'm gonna give this a shot, Jordan. As it all stabs into it, and like the crackles begin to disperse, they all start flowing into her um, left hand, her real hand, and they're all like swirling around it in a comet, like Phrasma's comet. And then she reaches out and grabs that thing's head, and I'd like it to make a fortitude save. Ooh. Sick! Val has single handedly taken care of these creatures. <laughs> What's your DC? On? 20. A regular success. It doesn't. I haven't gotten buffed in my DCs or my spells, anything. Okay, it'll take half damage. Does not have an AC penalty, though, because it did not fail. Oh. Six points of damage already halved. Okay. Ah, oh, come on. Is it, that not enough to kill it? It's still up. That would have been so cool. It's almost as though having a cleric in the party or a champion, you know, is fantastic yeah. for fighting undeads. Yeah. Who would have thought? Who, who would have <laughs> no thought? No kidding. This creature is so close to being destroyed as we start Zephyr's turn. So, um, how do how do rapiers work? Are they a slashing or a pokey or a piercing? piercing. piercing. Yeah, so I need to pokey. <laughs> mm-hmm. So you need to draw it first. Oh, I do need to draw it first. And drop your weapon, which is a free action. Mm, I don't but drop don't this forget weapon. if you stow your, your bow. weapon, it's another action. You could do a long range pokey with your bow. It's true. <laughs> you could do a <laughs> long could. range forceful pokey with your bow. The only the only downside is I do more damage with my rapier. Um, but your Bow. Can I put the rapier in the bow <laughs> and fire the rapier <laughs> with a spell strike? <laughs> no. <laughs> okay. That would be cool uh, of you, though. Come on, be, be cool. If you had like a great bow or something, <laughs> but a short bow. Okay, that's right. Let's get you a great bow. <laughs> it's as taller than he is. That's fine. <laughs> I'd have to hold it sideways. As long as he has the strength to pull it. I'd be a, a perpendicular bow plus. Um, yeah, I've still got my bow drawn. I might as well. Spell strike. Noise. Noise. Spell strike. Something I didn't get to use a whole lot of. Wait, is that? 
I, I, I want it. I want to hit it. So what should I use? <laughs> I understand that feeling very um, well. And I understand the need for phase energy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to use this card. Yeah. You trying to hit that pesky enemy? <laughs> Try phase energy. <laughs> It ignores you all feel cover. You're feeling sluggish and like you're enfeebled or something. Okay, that's Try a little phase better. Energy. It's a little better. 23. Nice. That's a hit. There we okay, go. Okay, good. The first one was only a 20. Woo. I feel like that might have hit. Ooh, that would have been one off. And I'll say that because I'm pretty sure he's going to die here. Yeah, I was about to say, I think it's AC is like 22. I 19. hate that. So that is a total of 20 damage. Nice. Dang. Nice. You want to describe how that flame imbued arrow finishes it off? So he knocks his bow. He pulls it back. The arrow bursts into flame. At the end, it doesn't actually burst. But he <laughs> lets it fly, and he's only like, what, five feet away from him? And it buries itself right into the head where, where Val grabbed him. And it just, it's a slow mo where it just slightly starts cracking into his head and starts spreading as it goes through. I don't know, is that feasible? Yeah. Sure. As like the ice crystals are just like being shattered off by the power of the impact. Yeah. And it's kind of like forming around the flame where it's just like melting on contact. Nice. And just like buries itself in the base of the head from the top. <laughs> what? And what? The, the ice just kind of forms around the arrow and the body again, just kind of encasing it all in ice like with the previous one as it just goes still. And that's where we'll end this episode. Boom. Oh. Woo. I want to keep playing. <laughs> All right. So, Petite, you won the hero point for this session for the really awesome use of you one of your highest spell slots to try to negate a very sticky situation for the party, which, you know, had that been a perilous situation, would have been game changing. Mm-hmm. One of my newest spells, too. Well, I thank you for that. And... uh I look forward to using more of the spells that I never use, but uh, for the time being, I'm going to go and bury my head in a bath of ice water. And we'll see you all in the next episode. Awful. He's a ghoul. (laughs) Get him. (laughs) Fire. Kill him. This has been an Atomic Broadcasting production. Pathfinder, Galarian, and the Lost Omens world setting are copyright of Paizo. More information at paizo.com. Music in the show is from Monument Studios' collection, as well as assorted artists with some original tracks composed by Jordy Hake. More details in the description. If you enjoyed the show, please remember to share with a friend, and we'll look forward to seeing you again next time. So nobody laughed at my joke. What did you say? I said, Livingston, I presume. Uh, I didn't hear you. I didn't hear I don't that. understand Because he asked what it was, and I said, oh, I so it's Living Stone, I presume. I existence. <laughs> I, I, I get it now. I didn't get it. Uh, I heard Living Stone. And well, that's what I that. said. <laughs> it, was, it was supposed to be a play on words, you know. Uh.